Sean, sure. obviously exciting times. Can I ask you about Johnny Marmax first of all? Um, are you disappointed that he's not available? Um, was there a, a, an opportunity for him to put the operation off or what are the circumstances behind Johnny? No, no we, we had a very emotional phone call yesterday and the day before and, and, uh, and he pulled himself out and I understand. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with the squad we've named, and it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all for thinking forward and, and not thinking about you know Johnny's gone, Percy's gone, Liam Farrell's gone, Harry Newman's gone. But I've got a really really strong group of men, and um, and I'm more than happy yeah. with, with, with what we've got. Um, obviously, some young players that we've not seen a lot of over here, but obviously very English. But and Victor Radley, you've spoken about him before. What does he bring, and how committed is he to committed? Oh, he's very committed. Um, yeah, he's. It was very emotional when he when he rang me, and uh, put his name forward. He's really keen to, to represent England, and he's very proud of where his dad's from. And um, and he's a good player. He's tough. Comp competes. Um, he can play. Uh, but his main attribute is that he, he competes for everything. So um, it suits the way we want to play. And just finally, for me, the two youngsters. Yeah, fantastic athletes, as you can you can see. And I went over to Australia to watch the Magic Weekend and met up with Herbie and spent a, a day with him. And I was really, really impressed with his desire to play for England. And and uh, we have got a fantastic athlete, you know, well, two fantastic athletes with uh, with Herbie and Dom on our edges. Did Dom need any No, no, I'd have been disappointed if I needed to persuade him. Uh, no, no, he's very keen. I spoke to him and his agent in Australia, so yeah, he's full on and um, and he's fitted in well with it. We're training with the lads uh, this week in, in Fallout, so yeah, he's been really good. Sean, I'm sure Erby will be able to answer for himself shortly, but um, he hasn't played for a while, has he? Are you confident that he's going to be match fit? Yeah, he's, he's injured his upper body injury, so he can run, he's fit, he's dedicated. He's, I know he's been work, working really hard, and my medical team has been speaking to his, uh, the Brisbane medical team, and uh, and I'm more than confident with with Irby. I've no I've no uh, concerns at all. Irby, are you, are you fit and ready to go? Yeah, yeah, feeling fine now. So I've had a long a long time out. Um, I think 15, 15 weeks now, but yeah. As uh, Sean said, I mean, he's, I've been I've been working hard with the England uh, staff and the and the Broncos staff, and uh, it's it's uh, fine now. Yeah, so I'm just ready to play. I guess you're going to look forward to play against Fiji next week. Is that, is that the plan? I'm not too sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> last one, Ian. <laughs> Sean, are you comfortable with your front row options in the absence of Alex Robson? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm comfortable. I I am honestly comfortable with. My 24 and and the external players. What's 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 uh, training on? So uh, our, our squad is proud English men who are uh, very very keen on, on on making sure we compete for everything and and representing England uh, the way we can. And I'm I'm more than happy with the 24 front row. My halves, I'm 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 ready. Put him. Yeah. The way he carries the ball, the metres after contact, uh, his work ethic, the way he's, he's acquitted himself since he's gone to Huddersfield, um, I, I think he's a really, really good player. And, and the phone call and the meeting I had with him um, about joining us, um, I'm not going to tell you the detail of what he said, but he, he, he showed me, uh, verbal as to me, that um, England means everything to him. How much did you Um, we have some good workers, um, good nines, and it has been tough. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the workers, what we've left, left out, but that's my job. I need to, in, in my in my art, pick two um, who I think can, can do us a job and, and get us get us through to a World Cup. How close are you to knowing your 17 for the Samoa game, Sean? Will the Fiji warm up go a long way to? Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very close to knowing my, my, my Samoa team. Um, um, there's still a couple of niggling doubts. The, the players have had a really tough uh, year this year. Um, so in this earlier period, we, we need to look after the, the players, especially Super League players. 
no offence to Herbie, but um, we, we need to make sure that we'll look after them and make sure we're firing for, for Samoa. Um, the the Fiji, Fiji game will, will, will help us um, to make sure that the team we've got for Samoa is, is the strongest. Andy Akers has never been in an England training squad before, let alone a World Cup squad. What is it about him that caught your eye in these last few months of the year? Yeah, I like his vision. I like how he gets out. Um, he plays square and he's... he's, he's his skill, uh, his, his uh, accuracy of pass, uh, is tough. He's a, he's a winger, he defence tough, and um, you know so he's got a good all-round game and he's a form player. And I said all year, um, you know I'll pick I'll pick what I believe is the best at the end. Likewise, Mark Sneed, obviously he's not been involved at all. At what point did you, did you think he's the man for you? Yeah, he's he's a great kid and had a fantastic conversation when I told him he was in. Uh, very, very emotional, but um, he's got probably the best kicking game in the competition and we're playing in October, November, it's going to be wet and um, you know he can make a bad yardage set into a good yardage set and that's his, his quality, he plays he plays straight um, and he has his eyes up, you know, he's a smart operator, he knows how to, he knows how to win games. And obviously you're without a few centres, but Kaiser is obviously a real talent in it, but yeah, well, he's big, tall athlete. You know, you you, you look at Cal and, and Irby and Dom, and we've got I, Kai, six foot five or whatever he is, and playing the back row, playing the centre. Great skill, great offload, uh, runs hard, uh, fights to play the ball quickly, and all all attributes which which I love. So he'll, he'll be he'll be a good asset to us. What about yourself, Cal? You've had a fantastic season, largely playing second row, but you play centre in the mid-season game. How do you feel about being back in and what position are you looking to potentially nail down in England team? Look, I'm just um, truly grateful to be part of the squad. I think at the start of the year I was obviously in rehab doing my, uh, with my ACL. I didn't think uh, the opportunity would come, but uh, for me it was just getting back playing and getting my confidence back, the love of the game back. and um, Playing in the back row was, was, was an opportunity there for, for myself at Salford and the year that Salford have had have helped me in terms of my performances. and. Uh, the guys across the field have been been great also, so it's made my performances even better. So uh, it's given me the opportunity to, to be here. But whatever position I'm put in, you know, it's it's England. You know, you, I want to win the World Cup. The team wants to win the World Cup. So whatever position I'm put in, or even if I'm a squad player, I'll do everything that I can to help the team because um, the team's more uh, the most important thing. Have you enjoyed playing with uh, Akers and Mark Snead this season? Yeah, they've been brilliant. I think uh, you know the coaching staff roles and uh, Haggy, Danny Orr, they've helped out massively in terms of their progression. Uh, Mark Sneed, you know, he's a quality operator. He's he's been successful uh, at his time at Hull as well, and been given them two have been given the opportunity. And I know they've been really emotional about that, but I felt I felt like they've deserved it with the year they've had this year, and uh, it's great for the Salford club as well, uh, which. Which has obviously had some tough times over the past couple of years, but we've, we've managed to be competing and trying trying to get into finals or been in finals. So, them two players have been a massive contribution to this year. So, they, they fully deserve the, the opportunity to be in the England, England squad. Sean, Sean, where do you see Callum as a second row or a centre? Um, centre uh, and a second row. So, I, I do like players what can play two positions. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But I, he's always been a pain in the backside for me as a centre. When we've played for Wigan against him, he's, he's, uh, I appreciate he's an unbelievable talent, great lad to, to work with. And, um, you know, I, I do see him as a centre, but obviously you see his form this, this year for Salford in the back row. It's, uh, it's a great asset to us as England. Sure. When you look at uh, Wellsby, Williams and Snead, it's obviously three quality halfbacks. Would it be fair to say those three are competing for two spot, starting spots going to the Samoa game? And we'll judge it on Fiji and obviously training sessions leading up to that. Absolutely. Yeah. All three quality players, really, really good kids, very passionate about um, about representing England, which to me is the, is, is the most important thing. Um, you know, but they're all up against each other, they understand. Um, I'm very much into tell everybody everything. And uh, and they then they know that the best two will play. Bobby made of well for this season. Yeah, I've been impressed. He's a good player. He's smart. He competes. He's tough. Uh, 
I think is a is a real good asset to us. The fact that you can pick him centre fullback half he's, he's just a he's just a good rugby player. I'm not sure how much um, St Helens have done with him. Um, I just think he's a natural good rugby player. What do you think is his best position? Um, in the halves, I think he's a good fullback. He's, he's very hard. He, he just seems to do well wherever he plays. But you guess that Sam will be number one as captain. Yeah. So where is Welsby going to? Like you say, he can play anywhere. Yeah. Well, he's going to play against uh, Fiji, so we'll see how he goes there. So what have you made of Jack Welby this season? I know he's, he's previously, previously talked in the past about looking up to you when, when he was a Wigan fan growing up. Yeah, he's he's been outstanding. I think he's he's proven now for long enough that he's not just a you know a, a one season wonder. And he's as Sean touched on there, he's he's played a lot of positions. He's played wing, centre, half, nine. He's played thirteen at times for Saints. And for a for a player as young as Jack to he doesn't go and fill in positions. He goes and makes an impact in in what whatever position. And he's playing in a very good centre inside, you know, and. Whichever position he plays, he makes them better. He's probably saying it's his best centre winger, full back and half. So that, that you know that shows how, how good of a how good of a player he is. Um, and the big one I spoke to him after the after the final, um, and they were speaking about his GPS numbers, and he just said, he said, you know, how do you move so fast and cover so much ground? And he said, I don't want to let people down. And that's the competitor in him. You can see that. You know, he covers a lot of ground in a game, and that's you know that's not taught. That's natural, and he's a he's a competitor. Every little battle he wants to try and win, and I think that's what sets him out as one of the one of the very best in Super League at the moment. Are you confident that the squad that's been there today can go on to win the World Cup on home soil? Yeah, I believe so. I think in a World Cup, you've you know you've you've got a bit form straight away, um, which always isn't isn't always easy, but we've got 24 blokes that are desperate to play for England, and that goes a long way, you know. So. You've you've got to go and win quarter, a semi, and a final, and I think the the group we've got is well capable of going doing that. Yeah. Uh, but yourself uh, being included in the England squad for the first time, how, how excited is that for you to, to be part of this side? Yeah, it's it's an absolute dream. Um, obviously, I've been out been out all year. I've not, I've not played I've not played since round twelve. So. I've just been my eyes have been firmly on on the World Cup and been speaking to Wayne uh, quite a lot through the year and been telling him how how much it it, it means to me. But uh, it feels kind of weird that it's actually finally here now and I can't wait to actually play on English soil again. Yeah, you, you live in Australia now and you have done for quite a while, but your your parents and your family must be over the moon. Yeah, well, I've not played in front of my uh, my family for a long, long time. So I think last time I played over here I was about sixteen, seventeen. Um, yeah, so it'd be pretty cool to to. Um, Play, play for England and um, and then uh, get a get a win that that uh, first game as, as well. You were out the squad and then you were back in. What what did you have to do to get back into favour with Shaw? Oh, I just had to, had to show him that I was still um, training hard and uh, a couple of things drop, uh, dropped off on like a um, uh, um, communication standpoint really, uh, and then I had to prove to sh prove to Sean and prove to the boys that I was still. Still, still wanted to be part of the team, and uh, thankfully that that happened. And um, Sean, Sean brought, brought brought me back into the team. Further, you, you you've seen uh, the, the Samoan qualified players up front and personal uh, this season. How, how big a challenge is that first game? Would you say? Oh yeah, it's a it's a very strong challenge. Um, a couple of those boys got named in the um, Australian side, and obviously turned it down to play for their their home country. So um, they got top top quality side top. Top quality um, uh, NRL players, so but I think we got we got the the uh, side to um, match them and and um, I think I, th I think we got the side to to beat them as well. Can you tell us what Victor Adler will bring to the England team? Oh, he just brings a lot of toughness. Um, he's a quality player, brings skill as well. He could he could probably play half as well. Could um, could Rad? So yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a, he's a, he's a, a, a top quality player. And, um, it's be it'd be nice to have him for for a uh, part of us. Have you been impressed by Dom Yeah, I played against him this year, and he's he's a really strong boy. Uh, I tried tackling him a couple of times. I think he, I think he bounced me off a, for, uh, once or twice. But yeah, he's a big lad, um, strong, fast. So yeah, he brings a lot of um, size to our to our team, a lot of power. So it'd be interesting to see him play. You can to play with him rather than against. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sure.
Sean, you know, you look at some of the senior players like Elliot, John Bateman, Sam, Callum, they've been around for a long time now. And then the, the ones like Herbie coming through and Dom Young. Does that blend, do you think you've got the right blend there that can really go on and sort of, like Sam said, potentially win the World Cup? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I say at the start, I'm, I've got 24 really, really strong, committed men who want to represent England. I, I genuinely mean that. I look through that the squad of 24 and I'm really happy. Um, and the blend we've got of, you know, the average age is 27, 28. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really good age of uh, uh, experience and, and youth and it's going to put us in good stead going through into these, these early group games. Very, very emotional. Um, yeah, very emotional. He's a proud Englishman, and yeah, it, it was it was good. It was it was a tough one to listen to, uh, but it was uh, yeah, it was, it was good. I see this is the strongest World Cup. Looking at Samoa's squad, Tom was the central squad. I've seen the Aussies won it. Is this the toughest one we've seen in the last? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at Samoa, they've got nine players playing this weekend on Sunday morning in the NRL, and, um, you know, we have to be very good. Uh, they're a very good team, but we're a good team as well. And uh, we, we've got things on our side, but they've not got, and they've got, they're big and tough, and, um, you know, so it's going to be full on that game at Newcastle. And um, the, other, the other teams as well, they're not in the group. No, uh, your Tongas and New Zealand, Australia, all very, very strong. Um, you know, and we need to be good. To, you know, we're going to we're going to have to play them and, and beat them. In. The is that one of them isn't going to make the semi final. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sam, you've seen. Is it the strongest you've seen? Yeah. In your, your career in the World Cup. Yeah, comfortably, I think. You know, you look at Samoa and Tonga in the previous World Cups. They didn't have anything like the squads they've got now, and that's down to a lot of players. You know, wanting to play for the for the home country rather than. Australia, which it weakens Australia, but only a little bit. You know, they've got they could name three squads and and, and compete. So um, I think it's good for good for the World Cup as um, for viewing. You know, there's there's five teams there that can all I believe play each other, and some are being upset. There'll be some shock shock victories I think in in the World Cup from from teams, and you know, hopefully we're not on the the wrong side of any of those, but. Yeah, there's, there's five teams in it that, that could all compete, and as you say, one of those is going to be a good team that doesn't even make a semi. Sean, do you carry a shell squad through this in case of injuries, or do you react as and when? No, no, uh, I, I need a group of men that's going to stay fit and be loyal to England, and it's, it, 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 it was a, a tough conversation, no question. Um, but I've got a group of men that's happy to be there if we, if we ever need them. No, they're going to have their own programmes. Right. Sure, they're supposed to join up for the group, but did you have to convince him, or was he convincing you that you should wear an English shirt? No, he, he, he messaged me, WhatsApp me, and then rang me, which which makes a difference. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't need to persuade him. He, the conversation was really one-sided about his desire to play for England and, and uh, a lot of detail on how important it was for him to win. John, did you speak to Jackson Hastings at all? Did yeah. Yeah, I spoke to him, spoke to him last week, spoke to him two weeks before that, two weeks before that. Yeah. Did he take it? Uh, no, no, I was just really, really honest and, and, and straight. And uh, and uh, he's been out with a broken leg and he, he needs to get himself right. You know, but I've got, I've got three good halves. <laughs>